Saturday. Saturday, mm-hmm. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. Oh, yes. All right. We have plenty of new beers in the fridge now. Many, many, many to go over. So we're going to bang out a few tonight. Do a few more tomorrow. And we're going to go on a little hiatus. Because somebody is doing the carnivore diet. Not me. I'm going to eat my veggies like a good girl. Or pizza. I'm sure that the cow that I'm about to eat ate plenty of vegetables. Well, you're not going to eat its gut, so. True. Anyway. Yes. All right, so uh, our friend Todd, who is now working for Dougal, mm-hmm. Dougal and Boulevard Brewing. And Oma Gang. Um, and Oma Gang. <laughs> All right. He scored us some uh, new interesting beers. Now, yes. this one is La Chouf. La Chouf. La Chouf. It's got a little moon guy on it. I don't I know why there's a 40 the, on there. It's their 40th anniversary. Ah. So you're going to have to read the spiel of La Chouf because I don't know anything about La Chouf. Well, oh, this is right on here. Artisanal Belgian Gold Ale. It is in like one font. Yeah, it's very Bear small. Bear with me. The gnomes of Fairyland are particularly fond of this golden beer. La Chouf, with its slightly hoppy taste, combining notes of fresh coriander and fruity tones, is the drink which gives them their zest for life. At least that's what these imps say when they are thirsty. Their secret used to be jealously guarded from one generation to the next until the day they shared the recipe with humans to seal their friendship. Of all the legends from the wonderful region of the Belgian Ardennes, the tale of La Chouf is the one with the most merit retelling. And there's a little sneaky gnome looking out from behind the... Mm. It is another one of these European beers that is 11.2 ounces. Yeah. So odd. And it is an 8%er. Yes. So. La Chouf. La Chouf. The internet, or yeah, the internet talked about the gnomes having a joie de vivre. I'm very excited. Yes, there is even a gnome on the bar. It's very gnome forward. Yes. I guess the Belgians are very gnome forward people. Here's your coriander. And beer. And yay. All right. Todd says this is excellent. Can try. Here's a beer. Very fizzy. Almost like a cider kind of fizzy. Yeah, it's got a nice head on yeah, it. It does have a nice head on it. All right, now what is coriander supposed to taste like? It's spice. Thank you. Uh, to me, coriander has kind of a light. It kind of like, smells like a weed beer. Yeah, it's a blonde ale. No, there's your cinnamon. Um, coriander <laughs> is kind of. I don't know, like fruity citrusy. It's very mild. All right. Where do you get these kind of odd region? Is this from the Brewfest? Yes. Okay. Great. All right. It's really good. That is tasty. It's got a mild sweetness to it. It does right on the on the front end. You're like, oh, is this a sweet beer? But it's not. It just has a sweet no. note right at the front. I do taste the coriander. That's that kind of it, fruity note to it. It tastes like a lot of these overseas wheat beers that I like. It's really these good. Happies. Yeah, it's got a lot of character to it. It's not one note, it's several notes. There's like a citrus. There's a they. It was advertised online as sunshine in a glass, and I can kind of see where that would come from because this yeah. is a very like summery very like bright flavor it's got beer. a blue moon ish ish kind blue of blue moon is like if you it's, took this and dialed the flavor yeah way made back. it way mild this is yeah. much this has a lot of flavor to it if you're looking for you know something blah like a bud light this is not it this because ain't the beer this for has you. way a lot going on but i find it very pleasant yeah it's very good i was expecting something completely different honestly so That's it's excellent. It, it's not alcohol forward. No. I mean, eight percent for us is is nothing. Well, it's apparently, but it's fermented in this interesting style where it's barrel fermented and then it's re fermented in the bottle. I don't know how you do that or what that means, but it's some cool fermentation process that is a little bit different from most of the beers that we have, and so it gives yeah. it that kind of farmhouse quality. There's almost like a I don't want to say funkiness because that would that sounds like a no. real turn off or a sour beer or something. But <laughs> not there's sour a, at all. There's just a 
there's an interesting quality to it that I haven't really, I don't think it's very familiar in, in most beers. No, not have. at all. Okay. So is Le Chouf the brewery? No, Le Chouf is the beer itself because there's other Chouf beers. It's oh. this Brasserie de Chouf or Le Chouf. Hey, I don't know. All right. It, yeah. So I don't even know if we can get this around here or where he picked it up. You can because um, Rachel said when she worked at the Flying Saucer, they, they sold Le Chouf there. So Where's the Flying Saucer? It's in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. Hey, all right, Le Chouf. Hey, if you, if you see it and you like wheat beers, you like something lighter, it's getting into, you know, spring and summertime, give it a shot. It is, uh, that's a winner. So. Yeah, big fan right. of that. Awesome. All right, well, that's your one. Yee.